reach for his hand, giving him a squeeze. Whoa, chick. <laughs> do you just do this naturally? Because, whoa. We're part of the moonlight. I ain't a fan to say. Can't be the sunlight. Hello, Romas. This is Romy here. Welcome back to Changeling. We are here talking to Elliot. He's kind of curious about our whole situation of our story because he's only heard rumors about it. And I kind of want to pick the silly one. I could tell you, but then I had to kill you. Well, I could tell you, but as you're probably suspecting already, if I did, I'd have to kill you. Ha ha. Stake through the heart, right? Anyone is going to die if you shove a piece of wood in their heart, you know. Mm, that's true, and I can't just push you into the sunlight since it's clear that it doesn't do the trick. Nope, I'm afraid we do not burn up in the sun. Give me some sunscreen and I'm good. I rub my chin thoughtfully. This is harder than I thought. I gave him a teasing look. Do vampires even have weaknesses? Well, there's the whole blood thing. Oh, that's right. I could just somehow keep you away from blood. Forever. That would be pretty hard. He gave me a wide toothy grin. I mean, if you were the only one around, I'd have to just bite you instead. Uh-huh. Trying to turn the tables on me, are you? I'll have you know that biting me will not be easy. I am morally opposed to cannibalism. <laughs> it's not cannibalism, cannibalism if I'm a vampire and you're a fae. I'm morally opposed to the consumption of sentient creatures as food. Technically, I'd just be consuming your blood, and it's not sen sentient. To be honest, this is probably the weirdest conversation I've ever had. Well, I actually can't say the same, but you do get used to the weirdness after a while. We sat there silently for a moment, I sneaked to look at him. You don't really want to bite me, do you? Uh, well, maybe a little. No, stop, stop it. Hey, stop it! Just a little, I mean, kind of. I mean, um... <laughs> he sneaked a quick look at my neck and flushed pink. Cannibal, you're totally a cannibal. I totally am not cannibal. I burst out laughing. This is so weird, but I guess it's not that bad. Hey, Richiko? Yeah? It's okay if you don't want to answer me. I mean, answer what I asked before. I probably shouldn't have asked. No, that's not it. I mean, it's not that I don't want to, but there really is a lot that I don't know. Everything I do know, you can pretty much look up in the old news reports if you want. I just don't remember most of it. I vaguely remember going to the woods. After that, nothing. I know that while Spencer was out with a search party looking for me, he got separated from them, then ran out ran out of the woods in hysterics with a huge bump on his head. He lost his vision in his left eye because of it. And then I showed up, totally fine, kind of in the days, but with no memory of what happened. Spencer's hated me ever since, or maybe hate isn't the right word. He's suspicious of me. Like, whatever it is that I don't remember is something that hurt him. I apologize for bringing it up. That was pretty insensitive, huh? No, not at all. I mean, it's just, well, I mean, it's not an easy question to answer because I don't really know the whole story. At the time, I think everyone just tried to suspend belief because, well, it happened. When reality seems to defy belief, you have find ways to make it plausible. Now I know where, no, oh, sorry, now I know there was more to it. I just have to find out what the more is. Well, if I was in your situation, I'd want answers too. Um, I could help if you want, with your research, I mean. I mean, I'm terrible with research, but I can try. You don't have to do- I know I don't have to, but I want to help you. I know you can do this on your own, but I want you to know you don't have to do it on your own, you know? I mean, if that's okay, I don't want you to feel like you have to let me. I smiled, there he went again. Elliot- What? <laughs> he shot me a panic look that is dissolved into laughter. He really was an extremely earnest guy. But the way he always backtracked into uncertainty made me wonder if he was just really used to getting rejected or something. Oh, that is fucking sad. No, stop. Still though, what is it? You're cute? Oh, I've been saying that this entire route. You don't have to worry so much about offending me. Nothing, bitch. I'm gonna say you're cute. Because I legit say that all the time about him. You're cute. It's just, you're cute. But I am? <laughs> You always act like I'm going to bite your head off for just offering help. I just don't want you to think I'm being pushy. I've been told I can be. Really? You don't come across that way at all. It's kind of a vampire thing, I guess. Are you- are, really? Am I going to see Mark being pushy around me? Interesting. Vampires are pushy? We can be a little- 
overbearing. It's, well, I guess it's kind of instinctive. I cannot imagine Mark doing that, though. I realized pretty quickly how easy it was to be really obnoxious. I just really try, I, I just try really hard not to be, that's all. So that's why he worries so much. Really? This is very interesting. I cannot wait to see that for Mark. What if he's the total opposite? <laughs> but he's naturally born to vampires, so maybe he just doesn't show it. My cup of tea, actually. <laughs> well, I don't get that feeling from you at all. So try to relax a little. You don't have to walk on eggshells with me. I know this might be hard to believe, but I'm pretty good at speaking my mind. Well, really? I mean, you're usually so quiet, right? Very shy. Definitely doormat material. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. Or call you a doormat? <laughs> no. I shoved his arm playfully for offering me, for offering to help me research. <laughs> No, yes, thank you for calling me a doormat, I guess. Actually, maybe we can ask Brenna if she has any thoughts. I mean, she's fake too. That would be great, except I don't think she likes me. She can be pretty moody, but it might be more helpful than just reading books. I just think it's best to explore all avenues. We can try to ask Ewan too, but he hasn't had much direct contact with fairy society. Brenna used to live with them. She's older than she seems, so she's probably a better potential information source. We'll just have to find a way to bribe her into cooperating. Bribe? I found that bribes are definitely the key to interacting with her. As I listened to Elliot and Bull over how to approach Brenna for information, I realized that I really had gotten the wrong impression of him initially. Elliot? Hmm? Thank you. I mean, for listening to me, for trying to help, for not telling anyone about the sleepwalking. I owe you one. Or three. <laughs> I watch as the heat as heat rapidly spread across his cheeks. He rubbed the back of his neck anxiously and quickly looked away. It's you don't owe me. I just want help. I reached for his hand, giving it a squeeze. Whoa, chick. <laughs> do you just do this naturally? Cause whoa. I do have to thank you. Michiko. Good morning, you two. Oh, it's Corbin. Hi. I thought it was good I thought it was gonna be Danny. Corbin burst into the room with a wide grin as he barreled toward us and tripped on the edge of the rug, face planting spectacularly in front of us. Wow. Uh, you okay, Cor? Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was up in a flash and immediately joined us on the sofa. Anyway, hey, Michiko. Haven't had much chance to d d d much chance to chat with you lately. Oh, hey, coffee from the murder. Do you like it? The murder? Well, that's the name of the cafe I got it from. It's called the murder? Like murdering people? No, 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 no. It's because I bur- Bur- <laughs> I was gonna say brother. Brothers and I are wizards, right? But most of us have crow familiars. Well, there are a couple of ravens and a magpie. They're all Corbids, though. It was easier to just pick the murder. It sounded better than the unkindness. Or the conspiracy. That sounds more like a movie title. Something really dramatic. With lots of rain in it. How many brothers do you have if the lot of you make a full-on murder of crows? Six! I'm the youngest, though. Anyway, what did you think of the cafe? Cool, right? Oh, I haven't been there. Elliot got this for me. Oh, did he? Did you, Elliot? I stopped by earlier. He wrapped an arm around Elliot's shoulder and pulled him close, grinning giving him a thumbs up. Well, you're moving on pretty- <laughs> You're moving in quite quickly, aren't you? I'm impressed. Corvin! Before I could stop him, Corvin picked up my cup and took a sip. Ooh, Americana, good choice. Wait, you just drank after me. Glad you like it. Can I have a cup back? I haven't even tried it yet. Oh, oh, I didn't try it yet. Okay, well, now I'm sipping after him. Oh, sorry. He handed it over and I took a sip while glaring at him. Oh, and it actually was quite good. For some reason, Ellen had a weirdly stricken, striking, stricken look on his face as he watched me take a sip from the cup. I mean, he was the one that gave it to me. I was pretty sure I was supposed to drink it. No, I think he's offended because he drank right after Corbin. <laughs> so, what are you up to this morning, Corbin? Corbin's smile faded. Oh, I had to report something to Vilos. Report? Just something he'd asked, about, asked my brother to look into. This doesn't seem like good news. Unfortunately not. Nothing for you to worry about, though. Yeah, I kept hearing that a lot lately. He stood up and gave us another smile before darting off toward the library. See you soon, Trig, Michiko. And Ellie and I were alone again. I swear he never stays in one place for long, does he? Corbin, I'm going to kill you. Ellie was wondering something, but I didn't quite catch it. He did look like he was about to strangle that pillow, though. What was that? <laughs> he turns to me, smiling brightly. Nothing. How's the coffee? He's smiling, but somehow he looks mad. I fucking knew it. Elliot, our boy, is real jealous. I would be upset too, though, because, like, what if 
Tyler drink after another girl. Well, technically, younger me would be pissed. Future present me would be like, really? <laughs> really? He's smiling, but somehow he looks mad. I used to be a really jealous girlfriend, but at this point, it's like, <laughs> I know who my worth. <laughs> I raise an eyebrow curiously. Boys are weird. It's good. I'll probably have to stop by the cafe on my own sometime. An idea someone came to me. Actually, why don't you let me treat you? No matter what you say, I feel like I owe you. At the very least, I should try to make up for smacking you the other night. Elliot's eyes went almost comically wide. You're asking me out. For coffee? His voice cracked slightly, but he clearly he quickly cleared his throat and tried again. I'd love to. I mean, yeah, that would be great. Maybe this weekend then. Oh, so I'm asking him. So I can't... I mean, well, technically, he could still bail out. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's that's perfect. Saturday? Sounds great. And on that note, the bell is about to ring, and I didn't get any studying done. Again. Oh, sorry, that's probably my fault, isn't it? Even after I said I'd help. Uh, no, it's fine. It's not your fault. Friendship is amazing. I'm really glad we had the chance to talk, though. Keep it up, and you're the one who's going to owe me. I should start studying some more quiet. No, I'm really glad we had the chance to talk. No, don't apologize. I'm glad we talked. This has been all pretty overwhelming. I'm still half convinced this sleepwalking is just stress. Let's see what the other choice would have given us. The keep it up and he's gonna owe me? I gave him a teasing grin. Keep it up and you're going to be the one owing me for all the times you keep distracting me. Huh. Okay, no music changes, so it's fine. I'm gonna go back to the one I, I chose prior. This has all been pretty overwhelming. I'm still half convinced that sleepwalking is just stress. Though as much as I, as I was saying that, I didn't really think it was true. It just didn't feel like normal sleepwalking. Anyway, talking to someone kind of helps me get myself back on track when I'm ready to just bury myself in a hole and try to ignore it all. And talking to you is definitely better than talking to Grant Mitchell, no matter what he tries to tell me. Well, you can talk to me anytime you need to. I hope you know that. I do, thank you, it really does mean a lot. We should probably head head down. His statement was punctuated by the first bell ringing. I gathered my poor and collected research books and left them stacked on the table as we left. And in any case, I was the only one cleaning lately, so I might as well just leave them there for later. Together, Ellie and I headed downstairs. This time, we weren't interrupted by Brenna on the way down. The hallway was crowded as usual. Ellie and I were jostled to literature. I was surprised to catch several snatches of conversation about the missing students. I must have been really distracted the last few days to totally miss the story. Interesting how everyone was just talking about high schoolers, though. Violas mentioned five people. Ellie and I had changed the topic pretty quickly, but if three people, three missing people were high schoolers, who were the other two? It wasn't really a pleasant topic to think about, but I wondered if he knew. In the end, though, once class started, there wasn't much time to think about that kind of thing. I couldn't exactly ask Allie if she knew about it. Though, now that I thought about it, she had mentioned some big case that agents were focused on. That had to be the one she was referring to. Man, I hope they're not having the interns do anything dangerous. It wasn't something I could ask in class, though. When the bit lunch bell finally rang, I was so already tired. The trade chemistry combo was really training. I paused in my locker and contemplated what to do for lunch. I've been missing out on my morning research and I really couldn't afford to. Lunch might give me some much needed quiet to look deeper into the sleepwalking issue. I could wait to eat while after I could wait to eat after I got home from school. Clever room it is. I dropped my textbooks off and headed in that direction, trying to avoid teachers just in case they wanted to enforce my need for assistance and saw me. My footsteps echoed slightly in the quiet. I guess I should focus on the sleepwalking, but there was also that issue with the eyes. Hmm. I hadn't had much time to think of it, but without the distraction of classes and lessons, my mind gradually made its way back to what happened what had happened in that morning in the bathroom. The incident with the mirror. I was frowning to myself as I started up the stairs. I wonder if that's something I should add to my research list. It was the second time now. But what was it? A hallucination? Illusion? I paused. Illusion. Wait, why didn't I think of this earlier? Fairies had an illusory magic that seemed to be almost un- Sorry. Almost universal no matter the subcategory of pay. It was called glamour. I had read about that recently. Could that have been it? I didn't really know how to use magic, but maybe it was possible to use it unintentionally or subconsciously. But then, if that's what had happened, what did it mean? Why would I randomly use glamour on myself like that? I was still mulling that over when I reached the door to the club room. In fact, I was so caught up in my thoughts about that incident that I didn't realize I'd been followed. Not until I had- what, what? 
Not that, uh, not until I happened to glance down the hall right as I stepped through the door, I saw a familiar face coming toward me. Spencer? Why was he following me? <laughs> well, bro. <laughs> well, bro, literally, well, bro. Well, why are you following me? As I was sitting on the couch staring at me questioningly, my fist instinct was to rush across the room, grab him, and dive over the sofa. Well. Fuck. We're gonna have to find out what's gonna happen in the next episode. Um, this is a quick progression of story. <laughs> of the whole, like, major plot happening. So maybe um, throughout the chapter we'll be more focused on relationship, maybe? But what the fuck? Spencer's following us. Technically, he is gonna see this room. Right? He's gonna have to see this room. He's following me. There's no way I'm gonna go through and then he's gonna follow and then sees nothing. Cause then he's gonna be like, where the fuck did you go? But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.